When Witches Ride, a play of folk superstition, by Elizabeth A. Lay. Cast of Characters Uncle Benny, owner of the Crossroads store, read by Todd. Ed, his son, read by Larry Wilson. Jake, formerly a railroad engineer, read by Jim Gallagher. Phoebe Ward, the witch, read by Jennifer Pratt. Scene directions, read by Kelly Taylor. Scene, the storehouse of a crossroads store. The action takes place in the back country of North Carolina, near the Roanoke River, at a time when the people of Northampton County still believed in witches. At a time when the people of Northampton Country still believed in witches. A stormy night. The room is a typical log cabin, roughly built. Red pepper, herbs, and dried vegetables hang from the low rafters. Boxes and bales are piled in disorder among the farm implements. Kitchen utensils and miscellaneous articles from the stock of a crossroads general store. Dust and cobwebs are everywhere. In the back wall at the right, a small opening cut in the logs serves as a window, with a rough shutter hinged loosely at the right side. The door in the back wall at the left is hidden by a dirty sheet, hung over it to keep out the cold air. In the right side wall is a huge stone fireplace, in which a hot fire blazes, the opening being nearly filled with logs. A large supply of wood is piled beside the fireplace at right. A big jug of liquor stands on a box in that corner. There is a rough bench in the front of the fire. In the front at the left is a table, three lighted candles, a small straw-covered jug, mugs of liquor, and coins are on the table. Ed, Jake, and Uncle Benny are seated around the table, playing cards and drinking. Outside, the storm is gathering. Uncle Benny is very old. His face is wrinkled and weather-beaten. He has no teeth and is nearly bald. He wears an old shirt and rusty trousers. Ed is middle-aged and red of face, very tall and lank. His shoulders droop, and his whole appearance is that of slouchiness. He wears a dirty shirt and sleeves rolled up, and ragged overalls. Jake is older than Ed. He is burly and strong, commanding respect from the others who fear his bad temper. He is something of a bully. He wears a dark coat over his overalls. An engineer's cap is on his head. Uncle Benny speaking in a high, nervous voice. This here's mighty good liquor, ain't it so, Jake? Jake pours himself another glass. Uh-huh. It's your play, Ed. I reckon you might as well pour me some more, too, while you're about it. Jake pours while Uncle Benny holds his cup. Suddenly, a loud crash of thunder is heard. Uncle Benny starts up, and jerks his hand away, nearly spilling the contents of the jug. Jake grabs the jug and sets it down with a bang. Stretch your hide, old man. Do you want to waste all this good whiskey? What's the matter with you, eh? Thou now, Jake. I didn't mean no harm. I reckon you nigh about wasted all this here liquor. Ed, drawling, testily. Well, taint none of your liquor, is it? Jake, turning on him. And what are you jumping in about? You're both out to jump out in your skins. What you fear it of? Tain't nothing but thundering a mite. But it's an awful night, Jake. It's witch weather. Thunder and lightning on a cold night like this here? Just the night for witches to be riding and spirits to be walking, and I can't leave off from feeling that bad luck's coming to us here. A very loud thunderclap is heard as the storm grows more fierce. Oh, lordy, lordy, 
"'It's one powerful queer storm, sure, but brace up, Pop, and have another drink.' The mugs are filled again. "'Mighty strange things has happened on a night like this here, and right nigh the Roanoke River here, too. I mine as how it was just a storm such as this when a old witch rid my old woman to death. Oh, yes, sir, when she woke up in the morning, there was dirt in between her fingers, and her hair was all tangled up what the witch had done made stirrups of it for to ride her through the briars. She was nigh about wore out, and all she could do was to stare and gape and mumble about going through the keyhole. Oh, shucks. Your old woman drunk herself to death, and I reckon it didn't take much riding to finish her, neither. If you'd been driving a railroad engine, nigh about all over Carolina and into Virginia like I have, you'd have seen so many sights that it'd take more than any old hag to give you the shakes. Any old backcountry witch like Phoebe Ward can't scare me off from a good dram like this here, let me tell you all that. They do say old Phoebe herself is prowling round in this neighborhood. Her and that turned old toad she carries round. She slept across the river last night, and Jeff Bailey seen her cutting through the low grounds bout to dawn. Well, I'd just like to see old witch Phoebe one more time, and I'd finish for her. Clare to goodness, the last time she come round my house, I fixed her good and purty. <laughs> I chucked the fire right full of red pepper pods, and she nigh about sneezed her head off. It didn't take old Phoebe long to pick up that toad of hers and clear out of there, damn if it did. I reckon she won't come soon again to stay with me. Rolling thunder is heard. They do say as how she was married to the devil himself once. I've heard him say he's coming himself and carry her off one of these days when her time's come. I reckon he'll get us all when our time comes for all that. <laughs> I'll brace up, Benny. I'd like to get my hands on that old toad. Uncle Benny looks around fearfully, as though dreading her appearance. He gets up and shuffles slowly to the fireplace, speaking as he goes. I heard tell it was her toad that's her spirit. The varmint leads her to a place and then sets on the hearthstones till it's time for her to move. She won't stir from that place till her old Gibby commences to hop off first. She didn't wait for her toad to hop last time she visited me. Let me tell you all that. You'd best mind how you rile old Phoebe, Jake. They do say as him what angers her will be witched. They say her spell'll pass on him and Gibby'll be his spirit. He'll have to move when that toad commences to hop just the same as old Phoebe. Uh, I'd like to see any old toad frog make me move on. A good joke of liquor's the only thing that put a spell on me. Ed rises and speaks to Uncle Benny, who is warming his hands at the fire. Oh, let's have another dram, Pop. As they stoop over the big jug in the corner to the right, a terrific thunder crash is heard. They drop the jug with a bang, and Jake strides over to them in a rage. The witch has entered unseen. Having slipped through the curtain over the door, Phoebe Ward is very old and bent and wrinkled. Her dress is wrapped around her in rags, and on her head she wears an old bonnet which does not hide her wizened face. There are two pockets in her skirt. She stands rubbing her hands, pinched and blue with the cold. Jake, with his back to the door. He has not seen Phoebe. Damn you, give me that jug, you two old fools. Are you going to waste all that liquor yet? The others are bending over the jug, paralyzed by the sight of Phoebe, who advances slowly into the room. What are you staring at? He wheels around, sees Phoebe, and starts back in amazement. The witch! There is a dead silence while Phoebe shivers towards the fire. Ah, oh, good Lord! How'd she get in? Uncle Benny, cowering in fear. Sure, you're born, she's 
done come through the latch hole. Jake, hesitating. What are you doing here? Phoebe ignores Jake and comes down center. Ed and Uncle Benny cross to the left as she advances and retreat behind the table in fear. She speaks to an object concealed in her pocket. Shh, now, Gibby, quit your hopping. She takes the toad out of her pocket, shuffles slowly to the right, and puts the toad on the end of the bench. Shh, now, this here's where you'll leave me rest a bit now, ain't it? There now, toad frog. She crosses to the right of the table. Uncle Benny, I was powerful tired. I was done come nigh on to ten mile from the river. Let me rest a spell, me and Gibby. Sure now. Jake takes a step forward menacingly. Get out of here, you damned witch. Ed and Uncle Benny regarded his boldness with alarm. Phoebe slowly turns to Jake watching the effect of her words, which make even Jake draw back. "'Tain't no good luck it'll bring to you, Jake, if you drives me out again into the storm. My spell'll pass on him and harms me, and the spirits be driving him like they drive old Phoebe. For it's my old man the devil you'll be reckoning with this time. It's a demon that what are riding a storm. Them and Gibby, they'll be driving. Ain't it so, Gibby? Driving and driving and never resting till Gibby rests. Won't you leave me warm myself a bit, poor old Phoebe, what the spirit's been driving? Don't rile her, Jake. Don't rile her. Jake, grudgingly, as he goes to the back of the room. Well, sit down, Phoebe, and warm yourself. Turns on her. You got to ride yourself off presently, you hear me? He comes down towards the table. Phoebe sits down on the bench, looking very helpless and old. Tain as if I'll ever warm myself again, Jake. Tain as if I'll ever sit again and watch the flames a snap and the sap a sizzling in the hickory logs. When my Gibby starts to helping off for me this time, poor old Phoebe's obliged to go. She'll be gone for good, Jake, and this here's the last time you'll lay your eyes on this poor old woman. Jake, this here's the last time. This here's the last time. What are you talking about, Phoebe? Are you studying for a ride off home to hell with your old man, the devil? She's going to ride us off to death, Jake. Don't make her witch us. Leave her be. A loud crash and roll of thunder is heard as the storm increases. The shutter and the door rattle loudly in the wind. Phoebe looks around wildly. I done heard the blackens calling in the thunder. She rises and goes to the window. The devil's riding on the fiery blaze of lightning and the blackens are a screeching in the wind. Oh, they're straddling on the storm clouds and they're leaning down and stretching out and calling for old Phoebe. Don't you hear them, Jake? Don't you hear them voices shrieking? The wind blows loudly. Don't you hear them demon claws a scratching at the door? They're calling me, ain't they, Gibby? And when my time's done up, I'll go riding through the storm clouds, and this here's the last time you'll be seeing me on this earth. This here's the last time, ain't it, Gibby? She mumbles to herself. Ah, oh, what's she mumbling about? The candles flare in the draft. Look, look, Jake. We've got three candles a-burning, and it's a sure sign of death in this place. Quavering. Don't let her curse us off by dying in this place. He goes to Jake and seizes him appealingly. Oh, I ain't no witch doctor. 
be you feared I'll leave this here old corpse behind me when I go? Oh, the blackens will be called it when my time's done over here and the devil hisself take me to riding by his side. I'll be riding on the storm clouds as they thunders through the sky. I'll be riding off in lightning and you won't see no trace of Phoebe left behind. Just a little while. Just a little while. Ed, less frightened. Ah, oh, stay and warm yourself, Phoebe. And don't mind Jake. He's sort of queer self, I reckon. They watch as Phoebe pulls the bench nearer to the fire and settles herself, crouched over the warmth. They sit down as far away from her as possible, but Ed and Benny are still uneasy. Thunder is heard. Gibby, you been a wrangling around and hopping. Don't be signing me to go right yet. Just leave me set a spell and get a rest and warm and set still, Gibby. Set still, set still. Uncle Benny, staring fascinated at the toad. I don't like these here goings on. I don't. I don't like that vomit of hers. I sure wish that old toad would hop off from here and sign the hag she's got to move on. I hope to God this here is the last time for old Phoebe. Phoebe lies down on the bench. Sit still, Gibby, sit still. I, I don't like to stay in this place, Jake. Tain't no good luck coming from three lights in a room, and I'm feared of that varmint. It's a demon, sure. One of us'll be witched if we stays. Let's us go. Jake, shaking off any fears and speaking with studied gruffness. Let the screeching devils get you from the clouds. Rolling thunder is heard. <laughs> that old toad makes my flesh crawl. Something's going to happen. Oh, come on, boys. I ain't going to let this here hag and her dirty old toad spoil my good liquor. I'm going to have a drink. He fills the jug and pours more whiskey in the mugs. As he goes to the corner to the big jug, he looks defiantly at Phoebe. She's done gone to sleep as peaceful as you please. He sits down to drink, and the others recover a little. I ain't going to let old Phoebe witch me. I ain't fear to her. Ed, looking intently at Jake. They do say how witches can't harm them, as is like themselves. Insinuating. They do say they's men witches, too. Jake begins to show drunken bravado. He speaks sarcastically. Well, now, maybe I am a witch. I ain't never thought about it before. I never did know just how to call myself, but maybe that's just what I am, a witch. Laughing, with a swagger at Uncle Benny. <laughs> you better look out for me, Benny. Oh, now, Jake. I ain't never done nothing again you, Jake. Now you know I ain't, Jake. Ed, half maliciously. They do say there's something queer when a man ain't afeard of a witch and her demon. No, I ain't feared of her. He takes another drink. All show the effects of the liquor. And I'll tell you all what I'll do. I'll go right up to the old hag and snatch that cap right off in her head, I will. He rises. They do say she keeps a heap of money in that old bonnet of hers. Uncle Benny, he rises. Don't touch her, Jake. Don't rile her. Let her be. As Jake advances to the bench where Phoebe lies. Oh, Jake. I'll see if this here old bundle is full of demon witch bells or just good money. He puts out his hand towards the calf. Uncle Benny jumps up, trembling with horror, as a crash of thunder is heard outside. Don't, Jake. Look at that witch. Look thar. There ain't nothing but her skin lying there. See how shriveled tis. Oh, lordy, Jake. She's done already, slipped out of her hide, and she's sliding through the sky. She left her skin behind. Oh, oh lordy, lordy. Oh, I drat you, Benny. Quit your shrieking. 
He'll jump out in your skin next. This here's Phoebe Ward and all her too. With a swagger. And I'll show you. Before Uncle Benny can stop him, he reaches out and lays a finger on Phoebe's hand. He draws back, awestruck. Well, I'll be damned. He touches her again. My God, Benny, if she ain't dead. Get a looking glass, Ed. Ed brings a cracked glass from the mantel shelf. Jake holds it before Phoebe's mouth. Yes, sir, sure as you're born, Phoebe Ward's done blew out. She had her last ride for sure. Cover her up, Jake, cover her up. I don't want to see her no more. Them three lights was a sign. Oh, lordy, lordy. Jake goes to the door and pulls down the old sheet, throws it over Phoebe. There, now, that'll do. He goes to the table and drains the glass. Here, brace up, all, and have a drink. They all drink in silence. Well, she's gone. Say, you all, old Phoebe's dead, and I reckon we might as well drink her wake right now. Fill up, all. Ed pours the whiskey while Jake takes the candles from the table and places two at her head and one at the feet of the corpse. Here's you, Jake. He drinks. Here's old Phoebe. He drinks. <laughs> oh, Lord help us. He drinks. This place getting cold. Need some more wood on the fire. The fire has burned low, and the light is dim. Well, you put it on. I wouldn't go nigh that there witch's corpse, not if her old cap was plumb full of gold. Uh, I'd shake hands with her old man the devil hisself tonight. Jake gets up and goes around the bench to the woodpile, with his back to the corpse. Phoebe sits up, very slowly, and feebly pushes aside the shroud. The thunder is heard above the storm outside. The shutter bangs and the candles are puffed out. Jake drops his load of wood into the fire and turns towards the bench as he hears the sound behind him. He leans against the side of the fireplace. All stand spellbound, gazing at the witch. Uncle Benny, give me a drop of liquor. It's mighty cold over here. Shivering, she gets up and shuffles towards the table. Ed and Benny retreat in horror. I'm done frizzled clean through just one little drop before I go. This here's my last time. She picks up a cup and gulps hurriedly as if fearful that she will be forced to go before it is finished. This here's my last time. This here's your last time, is it? Aren't you dead? Ain't we done drunk your wake? Ain't it time to bury you now? You get yourself out in that there door, Phoebe Ward. You're dead for sure, and I'm going to bury you now. The storm outside grows fiercer, with the heavier sound of thunder. Flashes of lightning are seen through the window as the shutter swings in the wind. You best leave me be, Jake. Taint in your hands to dig a grave where Phoebe will lie. Won't be no good that'll follow him as sees me ride the clouds tonight. Jake, frenzied, he dashes her aside and strides to the door. You won't ride the clouds no more than I will, you damned witch. You're dead and it's time you're buried. He stumbles through the door. Come on out, or I'll come back and drag you out when I get your grave dug. Vivid lightning is seen through the door as Jake strides out. Loud crashes of thunder sound nearby. Phoebe, exalted, listening as she moves to the door. Oh, I hear the black and thundering down the pathways of the sky. I see them whirling through the clouds and darting flames of fire. It's all of hell is rising up to carry me away. Strong wind and rolling thunder are heard. Oh, they're screaming out for Phoebe, and they're wild to sweep her through the storm with the devil at her side. 
tis the devil hisself is waiting, and he's scorching up the blackness with the lightning of his eyes. As though in answer to a call from without. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'll be riding, I'll be riding. She stands in the open door, facing the room, and a terrific flash of lightning throws her figure into dark silhouette. Then she retreats backwards, and the door bangs behind her. Uncle Benny and Ed are left crouching by the table. She's gone. She'll get Jake. Oh, Lord! Oh, where's her toad? Where's her spirit? There is a wild crack and crash of thunder. The doors bang open, and there is another blinding flash of lightning. Jake stumbles through the door in terrible fright. His hands are over his eyes, as if he is blinded. He gropes, stumbling, to the table and falls into a seat. i seen him. i seen him. My lord. What? Oh, what was it, Jake? I'm witched. Oh, I seen the blackens in hell. I seen the devil himself. I seen him. I seen the old man. The heavens done open like a blazing, roaring furnace, and the storm clouds wrapped old Phoebe round and snatched her up in fire. And all the clawing demons out in hell rid roaring past my ears. Oh, they blinded me with balls of fire and knocked me to the ground. And the devil himself done carried off old Phoebe to ride among the witches. I seen him. I done seen him. My God, he's seen the devil. He's witched us, sure. Uncle Benny moves back trembling and steps against the toad, which has moved near to the table. He jumps in fright and stares at it in horror. Oh, good Lord, the spell's here. What do you see? The toad. My God, she left her toad. It's done moved. It's moved from where she put it. Her spells passed on Jake. Her demons witched him. Oh, Lordy! It's moved. It's moved. Struggling, as with a spell. Oh, I got to go, too. That witch's toad done got me, and I got to go. Retreating from the toad, with his hands to his eyes as before. I'm going, Gibby. I'm going. I'm going. He turns at the door and stumbles out into the night. The door remains open on blackness, and a roaring wind blows through the room, leaving it nearly in blackness, as Ed and Uncle Benny stare at the toad and retreat in horror. It done got him. The devil took him. Oh, Lord, help us. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Ed and Uncle Benny fall on their knees and crouch in abject terror. The sound of thunder is heard rolling in the distance. Curtain. End of When Witches Ride by Elizabeth A. Lay.